town council meeting um, looking for a motion to uh, well first we'll call the roll and then look for um, a motion to go into executive session. So Deborah. Chairman Pro Tem Garvin. Here. Councilor Devereaux. Here. Councilor Gabrielson. Here. Councilor Caitlin Jordan. Here. Councilor Penelope Jordan. Here. Councilor Straw. Here. Mr. Chairman, you do have a quorum. Thank you. Um, I don't see anybody from the public um, in the meeting. So with that, um, could somebody please enter a motion? Go ahead, Penny. You're on mute. <laughs> Penny, you're on mute. I'm on mute. Um, I make a motion, sorry. I make a motion. Um, um, Tape Elizabeth Town Council enters into executive session in conformance with um, 1 MRS 4056E to confer with the town attorney on a legal matter. Thank you, Councilor Jordan. Is there a second? Councilor Caitlin Jordan, any discussion? Deborah, could you call the roll for the vote, please? Councilor Devereaux? Yes. Councilor Gabrielson? Yes. Councilor Caitlin Jordan? Yes. Councilor Penelope Jordan? Yes. Councilor Straw? Yes. Chairman Garvin? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, so we will enter into an executive session. Um, Matt, just a reminder to turn the recording portion off. And um, once that's done, I'll be all set. So moved. Moved by Penny. Is there a second? Second. Valerie, any discussion? It says recording on my video right now. Yeah, when you when the, the vote's about vote. to be taken needs to be uh, oh, recorded. So I just I just Sorry, started uh, <laughs> just trying to capture the motion as it was being made. Council Straw, thank you. And Sorry for the heart, heart palpitations. Any discussion? Seeing none, Deb, can you uh, call the roll? Councilor Devereaux. Yes. Councilor Gabrielson. Yes. Councilor Caitlin Jordan. Yes. Councilor Penelope Jordan? Yes. Councilor Straw? Yes. Chairman Garvin? Yes. Motion carries. Okay. Do we have Chairman to Garvin, do you want to carry oh. or? Um... What do you think, Matt? Um, pardon? Did, did, should we have Derwood hang around for the meeting or? I, I think it may be wise. Uh, just set your DVR, Derwood. You can catch, catch up with the first quarter okay. as, it, as it rolls. I'm going to, I'm going to turn my uh, camera off, so so you won't see what's up, what I'm doing. Mr. Chairman, if, if I may, I'll, I'll close this one down and I'll quickly go over and reopen the uh, the council agenda and uh, or the council. Do we all have to exit this? Yeah. Okay, so we'll exit this and join the new link. Yes. Okay. That's true. Thank see you. See you in a minute. All right, do we have everybody back? Let's um, get to the regular portion of the meeting. So with that, um, we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United yeah. States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We've already had the roll call, so we will go to um, Town Council 
reports and correspondence. And I'm actually going to start off. Um, well, actually, is, is there anybody else that has anything to report? And then I'll go. I'll, we'll do that. You can go. You're probably going to say what I was going to say. So go ahead. Um, yeah, so I'll just say before we get to the rest of the agenda, um, I want to take a few minutes to recognize uh, and honor our two outgoing counselors, Chris Straw and Valerie Adams. So Chris, I know from the get-go, you were uh, somewhat of a reluctant participant in all of this madness, um, but I commend you for having stepped up and, and your willingness to serve and would offer that while you may not have always enjoyed the role, I think you performed it quite admirably, actually. Uh, you and I didn't exactly start off on the same page early on, but I've come to not only respect you and also truly value your perspective and appreciate your voice on issues. One of the things that I think is so important to doing this job well is a willingness to put in the time and effort to do the homework that's necessary to be well informed about an item up for consideration and to get into the weeds when needed and the time comes to quote unquote, make the sausage that sometimes happens in municipal government. <laughs> There's nobody that I've served with that is more prepared, goes deeper into the layers of nuance and detail when it's called for and understands the minutia of budgets, ordinances, comprehensive plans, the census and so many other items and the potential repercussions and impacts of the decisions associated with them. And for good and bad, albeit mostly for good, you can be the contrarian point of view that makes us each pause for a beat to really consider all sides of an issue. While I know that you've practically been counting down the days towards this moment since you were sworn in, I hope you leave us gratified in the knowledge that you've made a significant contribution to our work and more importantly, with an open mind towards continuing your service to the community in the years ahead in whatever capacity might be right for you. I think yours is an important voice and I hope that we haven't heard the last of it. Knowing you as we do, I think I can be fairly certain that we haven't. Um, I think that Valerie Adams has joined us as well. And I wanted to um, thank her for uh, joining in even though her official time has um, run out with us. But Valerie, I do remember about this time last year when I reached out to you to gauge your interest and willingness to serve as chairman for the upcoming year. And I distinctly, distinctly recall that you'd thought about it and certainly felt more than capable, though you did have a few reservations, in particular demands on your professional responsibilities and the anticipated addition to your family in the spring. I know I sought to reassure you that the role didn't really take up that much more time than anyone else on the council. After all, it was kind of a get out of jail free card for having to serve on either the ordinance or appointments committees. And other than a little bit more time responding to emails on behalf of the group and working on the monthly agendas, it was a lot less work than it appeared. I'm sorry, but as you now know, that was a lie. <laughs> uh, who could have predicted then the year that would occur while you held the gavel? But I am confident when I say there was nobody better among us to lead the council through all that has transpired in your time as chair. From the early days of the public health emergency, when all of us were learning how to navigate the responsibilities of setting local rules and policies to try and keep our community safe, to the steady hand and empathetic way that you guided us through the very difficult and necessary conversations born out of the social justice movements that came to the forefront in the spring and summer, all the while managing as a new mother. You were a newcomer and an unknown to many of us when you won your seat on the council three years ago, but in a short time in this community, you've made a significant impact and left your mark. We all hope that your family finds its way back to us here in Cape, and when you do, we will all be here to welcome you home. So in recognition of Chris and Valerie's service to the citizens of Cape Elizabeth, I am pleased to let you know that uh, if you didn't know already, you'll be receiving a beautiful chair bearing the town seal. And I hope that you'll display it proudly and that it brings you memories of a job well done with the appreciation of a grateful community. So to Chris and to Valerie, thank you very much for your service. Um, is there anybody else that uh, had any other uh, correspondence or announcements or um, remarks that they wanted to make at this time? I, I'm just simple thank you to Deb Lane for a job well done on um, the election. That was probably one of the most challenging ones you have ever 
done. Um, and uh, Matt said this was your fourth of the year. Is that correct? So anyway, thank you. It, it was uh, phenomenal, uh, the number of hoops you had to jump through. And I thank you very much for a job well done. I certainly echo that, Deb. Um, you know, I've said to a lot of other people that um, we're very fortunate in Cape to have um, a town clerk and a uh, elections official that is second to none in the state. Um, I extend my thanks to you, uh, as I know I speak for the entire council, um, for all of the hard work that you put in to um, pull off what was um, a safe, secure, and certainly efficient election over the course of the last few weeks. I also wanna thank all of the election staff that you had working with you, um, who I know went to extraordinary effort um, uh, in support of that same, uh, that same prospect. So thank you to all of you. I hope you got some well-deserved rest <laughs> uh, after all was said and done. And um, you know, as a punctuation to all of that, um, thank you to all the citizens who took the time to vote and participate uh, in the process yourselves. It was an extraordinary turnout, um, one like we've hardly ever seen before and um, it's a credit to our community to have that level of engagement and participation in the election. So uh, thank you so much, um, Deb, on behalf of all of us. We truly appreciate it. Anybody else with anything uh, to offer up at this time? Okay, we'll go to the finance committee report. Hold on, let me pull it up. Oh, where did it go? So uh, included um, in the agenda tonight uh, with the packet materials and um, uh, attached to the, to the meeting invite um, is the monthly dashboard. Um, not a lot of change uh, month over month. Encouraging to see that we still um, are tracking favorably in most of the key areas uh, in terms of revenues um, and uh, that we have, um, we're not overrunning uh, in, in really any areas on the expense side of things. Um, Matt, I know last time um, we met, uh, I brought up the question on the gift, gift shop sales. Did you have a chance to look into that? Yeah, I, I did, Mr. Chairman, th and thank you for asking. Uh, yes, we. Uh, when you look at our appropriation control report uh, under the gift shop, uh, as far as purchases uh, go, we it has been metered down uh, significantly. Through the summer, we expended just over fifty thousand dollars on supplies for that uh, on an annual budget that we had created at three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So, uh, you know, the the activity curtailed significantly with a decreased uh, volume, at least at at the gift shop. So. Uh, we'll we'll see. You know, we're, if we have a, a, a an exorbitant and uh, and enthusiasm filled spring and uh, early part of next summer, then we'll be ready to meet that challenge. But I think uh, as far as meeting the demands of what we had for supplies, uh, the expenditures uh, matched up to where the uh, revenues were going to be. So we're in, we're in very good condition there, uh, versus having a lot of outlying uh, stock, quite frankly, just playing fallow, uh, ready and purchased. So. Uh, we've contained and controlled the uh, expenditures on that end of it. Okay. Um, were there anything, what, any other points that you wanted to highlight from the um, finance report? A couple of a couple of quick areas. Uh, you'll notice the sewer fees have, have come up uh, and, and we're back kind of where we should be traditionally from the benefit of getting the reporting in time uh, to be able to come forward with the dashboard. So we're starting to see that uh, rectify itself as the year goes forward. Uh, we also have uh, uh, under building permits, I kind of feel like it, and I've been watching all these different news programs, but like Steve Kornacki on MSNBC kind of like, well, if you look at the numbers we have here <laughs> under building permits, we are at 62% of what we're planning for the year for actuals. That is capital B bananas to be at this point for this year. It's, it's an amazing amount. I mean, Ben McDougall has been extremely busy. The, the permits are still, uh, going forward unabated uh, with a lot of people doing a lot of investment at their homes. So we're seeing that still continue as a trend. Uh, we're, we're at 62% for actual. If you think about that, we're $47,000 ahead of where we were at this point last year. And that was a, that was a very 
that was our best year last year. So uh, those trends are continuing. And then, uh, and then excise taxes still is maintaining its robust growth. So we're pulling away from our actuals uh, or from what our forecasts were there as well. So that's encouraging. And then finally, under pay and display revenue, uh, we have 160,931. That is not inclusive of October's revenue. So uh, we're, we're in, gonna be in fairly whole shape when that comes uh, all along as well, uh, which is pleasant because there was, you know, there's obviously concerns our, our, our bus revenue is gonna be non-existent this year at the port, but I think our, we are gonna make it as far as our, uh, as far as our pay and display revenue. But we still have the spring to count on, but our, our, our really our, our most robust port part of the year, we're just finishing up now. It's usually September, October and early November is when we go through. But, uh, but things remind me, is it, uh, is it May sorry. 1 or April when the, the fee goes active again? Uh, May, 1? May 1, but a uh, preview of coming events. I, I believe the Fort, uh, Fort Williams Park Committee may be looking at uh, coming forward with a recommendation uh, after this month to the council to consider adding, uh, adding April in uh, and then perhaps November. Uh, this past weekend, we're, we're seeing the season stretches quite to be, to be, to be brief. Uh, through both of those months, if you get a good April, I mean it's it's a year-round park, but we may be able to. They may come forward with that recommendation, so we'll see that as I know they're going to be considering it, so we may see that that soon. Okay. But I do believe we'll hit actuals there. But and, and then finally, the last item I did, I've received information on our health insurance coverage for next year. Uh, we're looking at a two percent increase, which is I, I couldn't be happier to hear that kind of news because. Uh, when they call me to let me know about, you know, they, when they personally call you to tell you that there's going to be an increase, I expected it to be in double digits and at 2%, that was, that was helpful for the assistance for next year's budget already. That's great. Are there questions on the finance report? Okay. Um, before we move on to um, citizen opportunity for um, items not on the agenda. In addition to um, our congratulations for our outgoing counselors, I wanna um, congratulate uh, the counselors elect, um, Nicole Boucher and Gretchen Noonan. Um, congratulations on, on their victories. Thank you to um, uh, Chris Kleeman and Kevin Jordan also for uh, standing up to run. Uh, also congratulations to Jen uh, McVeigh and Cindy Voltz uh, for their election to the school board. And congratulations, and thanks to Audrey Gore for running for that position as well. So looking forward to welcoming uh, the counselors elect next month. Um, and in fact, we have tomorrow night uh, our organizing um, caucus, um, which we'll be doing. Uh, so it'll be our first opportunity to welcome them, but to formally welcome them to their first meeting next month. So. Uh, congratulations to them. So um, if there are no other uh, questions on finance or any other extraneous items, we'll go to citizen opportunity for uh, discussion on items not on the agenda. If there's anybody from the public, of which we have about 33 members currently logged into the meeting, um, just raise your hand using the raise hand function in Zoom, and you will be recognized and um, have your mic open. I'm not seeing any hands go up, so seeing none, uh, we'll go over to Matt for the town manager's monthly report. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I will be extremely brief because I think uh, uh, my assistant town manager and town clerk, Deborah Lane, has some uh, fascinating information that I think the council and the public should hopefully find uh, as interesting. I, I wanted to take the opportunity to echo uh, Council's sentiments as well, and thanking Deborah and her staff for the amazing work that they that they performed over the past 12 months. Quite frankly, with four different elections over the past course of a year, uh, speaking with Debbie about it, uh, we started you know, having conversations and planning the presidential election two years ago, and then uh, we had a couple of elections early in the year, and then uh, everyone's uh, familiar with the challenges of COVID-19, uh, and that as far as trying to pull off a very large municipal election and a countrywide election presents its own fair share of challenges, which uh, I think as far as meeting that, uh, Debbie and her staff exceeded and really have set the bar for others to follow. Most noteworthy is when you have 
over 7,000 votes come through the town of Cape Elizabeth and she, Deb and her staff are broken down and home by 11.30 on election night. And she and I both have the history of hand counting and being home at 3, 3.30 in the morning uh, back in the older days. Uh, just amazing, just uh, just hats off to phenomenal, phenomenal work. So thank you for, for all of that, Devin. If, if you'd be so kind as to provide the council with a report on the activities, I, I think you'll be uh, equally, equally amazed. Great, thank you very much, Matt. And thank you to the council for your kind words. I will pass those along as I always do. Um, as Matt said, we literally began two years ago planning for this election. We met with our election warden, Carol Ann Jordan. We met with the uh, facilities director, Perry Schwartz. We had some electrical added into the gymnasium, knowing that we were gonna have to expand the entire gym to accommodate this presidential election. And then COVID-19 hit. So we, um, we went from a focus on heavy numbers on election day to this absentee balloting uh, process. The applications for uh, absentee ballots became available on August 3rd. Um, and right from the get-go, we had a surge of requests for absentee ballots. Also what happened at that time is there were literally, we received hundreds of phone calls and emails from voters. Um, asking different questions about the process. And it was interesting because many of those people had just voted in the March and or July election, same absentee ballot process without incidents, uh, but they had questions um, about the process, which again was very um, interesting. Um, we have had voters contact our office sometimes up to two to five times sometimes multiple times in the same day, um, asking um, kind of the same questions. Um, there seemed to be kind of a distrust of the process. Voters were angry. Um, but again, it, it still to this day, it's puzzling where that came from because we just had two elections before this one uh, and we were using the same process. So I'm not really sure uh, why the questions came in. They were very um, convoluted. Um, voters are very frazzled. I had one in tears one day, fearful that her um, vote would not be counted. Um, I spent a lot of time reassuring uh, voters that it was the same process, the same friends and neighbors administering the election. Um, and that as long as voters got their ballots in, signed and sealed their envelope, got it in by the deadline, uh, the vote would count. So it was, it's been a very interesting um, election that way. Um, we've talked for years about absentee balloting. It's a very laborious process, a lot of time and effort. So we carefully crafted kind of a step-by-step -step, um, process to tackle uh, this election. Uh, we organized what I called a reconciliation team. We had people start in mid-August, which is about six weeks prior to any other election that we would have staff start. Uh, they were tasked with documenting and accepting the request, preparing envelopes and mailing. The first batch of uh, ballots that went out were in early October, and there were over 4,500 that went out um, on that first mailing. Uh, after the ballots got sent out, of course, they come back. So the reconciliation team uh, was then tasked with the return of ballots, documenting the pal ballots and batching them. There were 6,075 absentee ballots issued, uh, 5,955 returned. We had 20 batches uh, of ballots at the end. When in-person voting began, we had some team members that were assigned to greet people at the door. Um, as you know, we uh, town hall is still on lockdown, but we did have staff to greet people, invite them in for absentee balloting, receiving um, completed ballots and voter registration. Uh, you know that we invested in a drop box that was placed outside of town hall. 76% of the absentee ballots returned were either in the drop box or dropped off to a staff person uh, here at town hall. So that, um, that was really uh, a great way uh, to return ballots. Some people were, um, uh, didn't want to use the mail as a return method. Uh, so the drop box and dropping it off to a staff member, again, 76% um, of the return. 
Uh, the Secretary of State's office implemented a status service whereby voters could check the status of their absentee ballots. That was a great service and I believe one that will continue. So another resource for voters um, during the absentee balloting process. We then received um, an executive order allowing us to start processing, no tallies, but processing absentee ballots a week before the election. So we brought in what I'm calling a processing team uh, the last week in October, we used four of the seven allotted days to process ballots, plus we had election day. This team was tasked with um, taking the batched ballots, confirming the reconciled ballots twice, opening and feeding the ballots into the machines. By election day, absentee ballots received by midday Sunday had already been processed. Election day was the culmination of weeks of work. Um, as Matt indicated, uh, we um, had staff from the reconciliation team, processing team, and others that joined us at the polls. We began at 6.30 that morning. Uh, there were about 1,055 voters that went through the polls on election day. Uh, and of course, polls close at eight o'clock. Uh, we had the gym taken down, results called in at quarter of 11. Uh, a couple of us that arrived before 6 a.m. were walking out of the gym at 11.30, uh, which again is, um, is pretty amazing. Um, Maine is fortunate to have the absentee ballot process in place that we did. Uh, Maine did not have to on the fly develop a system when COVID hit. Um, also, um, I think the days of the long lines on election day, I think Voter tolerance for that is maybe a little less than it once was. Um, voters found that um, an easy, convenient, and safe way to vote by, by absentee. I think we'll see that continue uh, again for those reasons. Our election staff uh, during this election, um, months ago, we didn't know how we were gonna handle it, um, but by different methods, folks contacted us. We put a team together. Um, they had a mixture of election experience, some brand new, some with 20 years experience and um, some with just a couple of elections. Uh, these folks had different work experience, life experience, different ages. Um, in the end, they developed friendships. Um, they self-proclaimed themselves proclaimed themselves as overachievers, which helped made this uh, election successful. They didn't want to go home at night with anything pending. So they stayed until it got done. And at the end of the day, they still said, Deb and Kathy, what more would you like us to do? What do you need? So it was really something. Um, I'm hopeful that the voters that contacted us early on with the worries that they saw that uh, the worries that they had did not play out in Maine um, I think Maine is uh, poised to continue solid and fair elections. I think with just a few minor adjustments, um, mainly resources, supplies, staffing and funding is the key. Um, set us up for success, uh, not for failure before we even begin. So um, the Clerks Association, the statewide will be working uh, to put some um, proposed legislation together for this uh, session as Matt was talking about the cloture date I'm sure will be coming sooner than than we know so uh, we'll be working with them uh, to try to get some minor revisions uh, to the election laws the um, the departments involved um, with this election um, obviously the town clerk's office, the tax office, fielding all the questions, assessing codes, making signs. Our assessor helped uh, set up for the election, public works, uh, taking all the supplies down uh, to the gymnasium, helping set up and bringing it all back. Uh, the police for their support and security um, signage, facilities department, installing the drop box, signs, opening and closing the building. These minor details that that we don't think about, but all add up uh, into the success of these elections. The custodial staff um, setting up and taking down uh, the gymnasium, the school department uh, moving out their uh, classrooms that they had in the gym uh, to make this happen. Our community services department for all that they um, did for us as well. So I just wanna acknowledge a tremendous effort um, from the departments as well. And, you know, again, to the staff, our 
Deputy Clerk Kathy Maxwell, um, you know, tremendous, tremendous help with this election and just her organizational skills and attention to detail is what we needed. And, and she uh, led a lot of the reconciliation team for us. And um, our processing team, our warden, Carol Ann Jordan, uh, took the week off at the end of October, right through the election to be with us. And she headed up the processing team, the setting up of the gymnasium, and of course, led us through um, election day as well. And, and just everyone um, stood up and and did you know did their job um, really really well and again always was asking what else can we do um, so I'm just you know very blessed to have um, everyone on our team this time I think that we have some folks that will continue um, with different elections it's always good to um, bring in um, some new faces as you know others maybe don't work with us anymore or move on or or just with these larger elections that we need additional uh, staffing so I just would you know like to thank everyone for that and um, again it was a very challenging really tough time particularly the last um, the beginning of of the process um, toward the end I think people saw that um, uh, that the system does work, that Maine has a great absentee balloting system and things were, were gonna be all right. We were going to be able um, to handle it. The, uh, as I mentioned, the absentee ballots requested were about 70% of the registered voters. 98% of those were returned. Uh, obviously 2% were not returned. Several of those people that did not return ended up voting, excuse me, voting on uh, election day. Um, and as I mentioned, 76% or over 4,500 uh, ballots were returned by the drop box or the drop off, 10% by mail and 14% uh, voted in person, again, during the absentee balloting process. Um, there was a lot of talk at the beginning about missing signatures and what would happen with that. I can tell you that we had three absentee ballots uh, that did not have signatures. I was able to contact all three voters. One ended up voting in person. The other two for extenuating circumstances, um, and I won't go into their personal lives, for extenuating circumstances uh, could not get into vote. So we really just had two uh, that were uh, unable to come in. So again, we're estimating about an 81% uh, voter turnout um, for this election. So um, with that, again, thank you, um, everyone. We've um, received many um, uh, emails and phone calls for people. Some people we know, some we don't, but just for folks taking the time to acknowledge the work of the staff um, is very much appreciated. Um, so again, we, we thank you all. And I just uh, thought you might uh, find some of those numbers kind of interesting um, for this uh, time around. So again, we thank you very much. That's great, Deb. Thank you so much. And again, uh, truly heartfelt gratitude to, to all those people that you just recognized and yourself included um, for a really amazing job. So hopefully it only gets easier <laughs> in the years to come uh, and that all that, um, you know, it's funny, I, I was reading uh, in the Press Herald today about outgoing Secretary of State Dunlap saying, you know, some of the things that were introduced, you know, out of necessity are, are probably going to hang around to stay, which uh, might might uh, be a good thing. So we'll see how those things go. I think the drop boxes in particular, I know I certainly saw a lot of people outside taking photos as they dropped their ballots and stuff. And that sort of looks like it's destined to become a new new tradition. So Absolutely. Um, Matt, anything else you wanted to report on or is that it? That would be it for me, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you. Any questions for either Matt or Deb? Super. Um, with that, we will continue on in the agenda. Uh, first, with a review of the draft minutes of virtual meetings held on uh, October 14th. Is there a motion? I thought they were going to be approved at the those will be available. Oh, next I, month that sure. cut off uh, on the on my page. There's a page bit page <laughs> break there. My apologies. Okay, we'll move on from that. We'll we'll hold that for the next meeting. I was wondering why nobody was speaking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, okay. Uh, so items 142, I haven't done this in a little while, guys. Give me a break. <laughs> um, items 142 through 146 are proposed for uh, a consent agenda. Uh, so uh, if anybody has any of those items that they'd like to pull out, speak up now. Um, those items being uh, click it or ticket grant from the Maine Bureau of Highway Safety, high visibility distracted driving enforcement grant also from the Bureau of Highway Safety, uh, safety enhancement grant from the Maine Municipal Association, sidewalk grant, um, uh, and uh, a acceptance of a grant from the estate of Francis Dyer for the library. So all of those are items 142 through 146. Seeing uh, nobody interested in pulling those out. Oh, Matt, go ahead. Mr. Chairman, if I just want to just take the opportunity to express the gratitude for the donation from the estate of Mrs. Dyer uh, for the TML. Uh, that's just, it, it was not anticipated. It came out of the blue and the generosity was just, uh, has overwhelmed us. So we're grateful for that and wanted to just take an opportunity to say thank you. Absolutely. I appreciate you doing that. Um, I was going to ask uh, if, there's nobody that wants to pull any of these out. Is there also anybody from the public that wishes to speak to any of these items? I see uh, Aaron Plummer with her hand raised. And I just, go ahead, Aaron. Hi. I just yeah, wanted to say Your name thank and address? you. Um, I'm at 60 Woodland Road, and Thank I'm you. just so thankful for everyone at Town Hall. Thank you, Deborah. You've done a, such a great job. Thank you for saying that. Um, any other members of the public wishing to speak on um, items 142 through 146, the grants and the um, bequests to the library? Seeing none, is there a motion? I move the consent agenda. Moved by Councilor Gabrielson, is there a second? Second. Second by Councilor Penny Jordan. Any discussion? Could I just say, Paul Go Fenton, ahead. amazing job getting all of these uh, different um, grants, like, and they're so. Um, I just think that's a lot of work to grab these things. So I thank him very much for all his work in making that happen. I'll be sure to pass that along, Council Jordan. Thank you. Any other discussion? Seeing none, Deb, could you give us a roll call for the vote, please? Councilor Devereaux? Yes. Councilor Gabrielson? Yes. Councilor Caitlin Jordan? Yes. Councilor Penelope Jordan? Yes. Councilor Straub? Yes. Chairman Garvin? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you so much. Um, item number 139-2020 was tabled at our October 14th, 2020 meeting. This is an authorization to enter into a lease option agreement and a net energy billing credits agreement with Encore Renewable Energy at the landfill site at the Cape Elizabeth Recycling Center. Um, I will first entertain a motion to take this item off the table. Is there a motion? Moved I, by Councilor I, Penny Jordan. I'll move that the town council takes item number 139, 2020 off the table from the October 14, 2020 meeting. Thank you, is there a second? Second. Councilor Gabrielson, any discussion? Councilor Devereaux? Yes, um, I just had a couple questions on this and I talked to Matt earlier and I know he sent out an email to all of us, but I'd just like to ask Matt again, um, what are the projected savings to the town over the next 25 years um, for this project? Can I? Yes, I, can I, I just, think, I think you and I are on the same page. No, just, yeah, just a matter of procedure. Um, I want to get to your question, Valerie, and I think it's an important answer, but it, is there any discussion about taking the item off the table? I don't want to discuss the item until, until we've procedurally no, moved it off no, the table. Okay. No. So seeing none, uh, 
uh, with a motion and a second, I don't think we need to vote to take something off the table, right? I think it should be. I think it should be okay. It's Correct. So uh, this item is back on the table. Council Devereaux, you're recognized. Okay. Um, again, Matt, can you um, give us an idea of what the projected um, savings to the town will be with this project over the next 25 years? Yeah, Council Devereaux, thank you very much for the question. And uh, uh, the council may recall back in, uh, actually when I was speaking with Council Devereaux, I said, well, we had that in the package back in July to which we both commented that feels like that was years ago, as we, as we all have felt. But uh, as a quick refresher, uh, over the entire period of the 20 year first term, uh, the anticipated savings plus income is uh, just over $2.1 million uh, with a year one uh, savings and in income being uh, $83,500. So from there it grows over the years as the difference between uh, what the anticipated rate that would be charged on the normal market uh, and what the uh, what the rate uh, from what we have in our net metering uh, credits will will offset. So, and then obviously uh, there's also lease income for a thousand dollars per acre per year, where they're uh, where they'll be paying us land rent for the uh, seven acres that they have. So, but over that time period, it grows from eighty three five all the way up to the final year at one hundred twenty nine thousand nine hundred. Effectively, that accumulates to just over two point one million dollars at the end of the term. Right. Um, I do want to offer uh, members of the public the opportunity to speak on this item before we go any further in the discussion. Are there any members of the public joining us that would like to speak on item number 139-2020, the solar energy? I don't see any hands raised. So is there uh, any additional um, Discussion by the council, or uh, is anybody uh, interested to enter a motion? Councilor Straw. Uh, yeah. So, um, Matt, the the attached agreement with the map it shows the entire lot, um, but it's still the plan that it's just the section. the The final agreement is just going to be the section that's the old fill area, right? You are you correct, Councilor Straw? Yeah, uh, it's just. The, on that attachment, it shows the entirety of the parcel uh, that that uh, that is under the agreement. But the area that will be used is the area that is roughly seven acres, which is the old uh, capped uh, stump dump landfill uh, in back of the recycling center. Great. And then um, the they're intending to start uh, in the very very near future with this. This is I just want to avoid a situation like the lot next to the town hall where we enter a contract well we have some type of clawback provision or something that they actually start work on this because time with the the energy credits my understanding is times of the essence to begin construction and if they don't um is i, I would just ask that as you put the final uh dotting i's crossing t's just bear that in mind if or do you know if they're planning on starting immediately if, if i may mr chair uh they uh Encore has already been to the planning board for their first introductory uh, meeting. So uh, their plan is to keep moving forward. And I know uh, representatives from the company are both on tonight as attendees, but they are looking to move forward. Obviously uh, time is money. And uh, that's why we've worked to try to get uh, both of these uh, items on for the council to look at this evening so they can move forward and uh, with the haste that they'd like to work as well. So uh, we're all encouraged to, to move forward quickly. And there are uh, as you saw in the agreement, there are areas where if, if it doesn't work, then we have abilities to end. But I think uh, both of us have been working steadfastly and uh, as fast as we could to get this in front of the council so we can get this because it's important to all of us. Is there other discussion at this point or again, uh, anybody interested in putting forward a motion? I'll do it. Go ahead. Okay, do it. this is a long one. Be patient. Um, do you want to just say as, as as presented in the agenda, that's fine. Oh, that would be so wonderful. As uh, written in the agenda, I move this item. Second. 
Motion by Councillor Penny Jordan, second by Councillor Straw. Any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll call the roll for a vote, please. Councillor Devereaux? Yes. Councillor Gabrielson? Yes. Councillor Caitlin Jordan? Yes. Councillor Penelope Jordan? Yes. Councillor Straw? Yes. Chairman Garvin? Yes. The motion carries. Thank you very much. Um, thank you to the Energy Committee for all their work uh, to this point on that. Um, I know it was a tremendous amount of uh, work that went into that and we're very grateful for that. Um, next item on the agenda is item number 147-2020. Um, this is uh, authorization of the council to apply for an energy ma uh, efficiency main rather uh, grant. Um, for electric vehicle recharging stations. Is there anybody from the public that would like to offer any comment on this item? Seeing nobody, um, Matt, would you uh, like to give us just a brief overview before uh, we move forward? I'd be happy to, Mr. Chairman. Uh, special thanks goes out to Sam Milton and Richard Parker from the Energy Committee, as well as the Energy Committee for bird dogging this. Uh, the reason this is on here this evening is we are looking to, uh, for council approval to allow uh, the town to apply for energy efficiency, efficiency main grants to provide two uh, charging stations, one to be located at Fort Williams Park and one to be located at a community services building. Uh, the deadline for application is December 1st, and so we're looking to have, uh, that's why this is on the council's agenda this evening. We are not committed to uh, to those funds, but if you don't apply, you'll never know if you can if you are eligible to receive it. And this would be up to uh, this would be for a grant of 80% of the cost of installing and acquiring it. So, uh, with this approval, and if we do receive uh, approval for the grant from Efficiency Maine, uh, we will then have time to go out in the RFP process, uh, get hard numbers as well as uh, uh, budget accordingly through our capital projects for next year. So this is a great opportunity for us, uh, you know, the council stated goals in order to try to decrease the town's carbon footprint, as well as uh, energy efficient or electrical, electric vehicles are becoming more and more common uh, since the last time council considered this when the last band of grants had come through. And then uh, finally, this is, uh, these were, we're looking to do networked uh, charging stations, which uh, there's a difference between networked and non-networked. Networked, allows you to charge for the electricity versus just providing it for free. So uh, that way there's, uh, you know, we may actually, the town may make a little bit of revenue off it in the, in the long run versus having a, a complete expenditure on the annual basis. So uh, they did a great job pulling this together and we're looking to see if we can go to the next step and see if we have the opportunity to do this going forward. And I know uh, it's on the agenda for Fort Williams Park Committee uh, for their next meeting as well to look at uh, alternative sites at the park where they would uh, where they would site uh, charging stations. Thanks for that introduction, Matt. Uh, is there a motion on the item? Councilor Devereaux. So moved. I move that um, Cape Elizabeth Town Council authorizes the application for an efficiency main grant to fund two electric vehicle charging stations. Moved by Councilor Devereaux, is there a second? Second. Councilor Penny Jordan, any uh, discussion? So Matt, I have one quick question. I don't know if you know the answer to, does the, the grant is a one-time award, right? So it is, Effect, even even though the costs that were presented in the um, materials that we got um, reflect maintenance and, and things like that, are those are both are both the software and maintenance annual ongoing costs? They may be. They're offset by the revenue that we may uh, generate from there. But if they we are, if uh, we charge for it, yeah. Yeah, if if we do charge for it, and, and part of it is, uh, uh, you know, speaking with Richard and uh, and Sam about this, uh, mm -hmm. and they were talking with multiple. Uh, Multiple folks did. They said, you know, the that's why you notice a pretty big span between uh, the the annual expenses for maintenance and software updates, uh, whereas they're almost uh, they're about as difficult to run as an extension cord from an outlet. Uh, they mm -hmm. they rarely, if ever, run into problems. So 
uh, you could sign a maintenance contract annually, and that's kind of what the gross estimate is as to what, what that fee may be. So and I think it was slide six of the pro forma. The initial cost of the town, I, I was confused seeing the, the negative the negative uh, amount to the town. I, I, am I just not reading how that's represented or? Let's see. Uh, it's on okay. page six. So you're what what at, I'm trying uh, to figure out is, yeah. so if the grant is for 80, up to 80% of the cost, the high end estimate of the total capital cost is 35. So our obligation would be 20%, the 16,000, yes. is that right? Okay. Yeah. The next column over where yeah. I was confused by the representation in the next column over. Oh uh, yeah, that, that'd be the difference between the, the savings. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Uh, any other questions or discussions on this? Seeing none, Deb, could you give us a roll call, please? Councilor Devereaux? Yes. Councilor Gabrielson? Yes. Councilor Caitlin Jordan? Yes. Councilor Penelope Jordan? Yes. Councilor Straw? Yes. Chairman Garvin? Yes. The motion carries. Great. Again, thank you to the Energy Committee for bringing that forward. Next up is item number 148-2020, Town Council to update on the current status of the pending paper streets issue. Um, I do obviously, and judging by the list of participants that are here, I assume many are here to um, participate in this item. Um, I do want to certainly obviously give the time for um, public comment. I wanna ask the council uh, whether or not it might make sense sequentially here to um, just give a little bit of an update um, on the nearly hour and a half executive session that we held prior to the meeting, um, which will probably give better context and background for those people who I expect would like to offer their public comment on this. So um, is unless there's anybody that disagrees with that approach. I don't see anybody. So long as the approach does, doesn't include discussing the executive session sounds great. No, no, no. I just, I, I just, I have a feeling that people can't offer adequate comment without really knowing uh, other than the vague description of the item, um, what they're commenting on. Um, so I'll start off. Um, so first I wanna thank the um, members of the public who have reached out to us um, by email or otherwise um, uh, on this item. Um, as all of the council knows and much of the audience gathered, I imagine, um, this has been a continuing and ongoing item for the council. As I just mentioned, we met in nearly hour and a half executive session uh, with our uh, council on this, who uh, is still with us for um, this public portion of the meeting um, and to discuss um, uh, just a general update on where things stand in the process and um, what the potential next steps for the council are to consider. Um, so. One thing that I wanna just state at the outset um, uh, to sort of table set on this is um, there have been, um, you know, certainly a, a lot of communication directed towards the council, encouraging the council based on the decision that was uh, entered by the Superior Court uh, back in July to simply accept the paper street and, um, and move on and uh, whatever consequences come of that, um, uh, let that process play out naturally. Uh, which is certainly an understandable position to hold. Um, the council has been very, um, uh, I think, specific and deliberate um, in its position that's been represented to this point. I, I'm gonna reiterate what I think is the general consensus position of the council um, for anybody that has either not been on some of the more recent meetings on this or for whatever reason, even if they've been on those meetings has been unclear on what the position of the council is. Um, the, the overall consensus opinion of the council uh, as represented here today is that um, there is no interest whatsoever in sort of backpedaling, if you will, um, from uh, the, the position that was defended in the litigation on this matter. Um, and um, no interest, uh, you know, by the majority of this council um, in ceding any of the rights that were affirmed uh, in the decision in that case. Um, so what we've been continuing to embark on is, like I said, deliberate um, discussions 
uh, with our external counsel who, um, you know, frankly was very instrumental in helping to secure and achieve um, the decision that was rendered uh, in the town's favor on this item um, to figure out exactly um, how we should go forward, um, being very uh, clear and um, uh, paying very close attention to dotting I's and crossing T's so that um, we don't as a council do anything that could jeopardize um, the position, uh, like I just said, that was um, fought for through litigation and secured uh, with the decision. So that's what we were uh, engaged in executive session on um, uh, prior to this meeting. Um, I think that that, uh, unless anybody else from the council wants to weigh in with additional context or comments at this point, I think that generally summarizes sort of where we're at right now. Am I seeing nodding heads? Anybody have anything they want to add to that as background? Okay, so um, with that, uh, is there anybody from the public that wishes to speak on this item? Hmm. I see no hands raised. Now I see hands raised. Um, first person I saw a hand go up was George Foley. Go ahead, George. Unmute your name and address, please. Yep. George Foley, 9 Pilot Point Road. Um, I'm hoping that, I don't know what the process seems to be. It seems to be ever changing, but that we can get this on for a vote. You are the council that has dealt with the majority of these issues most recently. I would like to see you bring it to a vote and accept the paper streets so that this issue, um, I'm not happy with the street and the kicking the can down the street as we've been doing time after time after time. I would very much like to see it resolved with accepting the paper streets. And by that, just to be clear, I don't mean a piece of it. I mean all of Surfside Avenue and Atlantic Place to make the connection complete. I've heard rumors that they're all oh, will accept this piece, but not that, and this piece, but not that. No, we've all wanted all of it accepted and, and part of the town's uh, inventory, if you will, of safe and secure places to go. So you can decide later what to do with it, um, but let's get this done. Put it on the agenda, accept the paper street, and make it real. We're, we're done with this. It's, it can't be just drawn out and drawn out and drawn out. Thank you. Thank you, George. Um, next up is Nick Bryant. Hi, ahead, Nick. This is uh, Richard Nick Bryant. I live at 55 Spurwink in Cape. Um, I do want to add my voice to those who are urging the council to act rather than to keep pushing things down the road. I do understand the idea that you want to confer with your litigation council. I've spoken with Derwood myself. Um, and I think it is important that the town have a motion to accept that is as carefully crafted as possible to offer Derwood the most flexibility in defending the town. But I do think that the, the council would be better served with a little more urgency to getting to that point so that we can get it on the agenda and voted and move forward with life um, and realizing the public benefits here. I think there are plenty of alternatives, which I'm sure Derwood is aware of. Um, but at the end of the day, the town has to make a decision to exercise those rights, which we fought so hard for. Uh, and with that, I appreciate the work you guys are doing. Thank you. Thank you. Next uh, up is Marianne Lynch. Go ahead, Marianne. Thank you. Um, and thank you very much. I also appreciate the work you are doing. Um, it's just been an a very incredibly challenging year 
and I really admire all that you've been doing and how you've been doing it. Um, having said that, though, this issue, this particular issue has gone on for many years. Some would say over 100 years. Now that the lawsuit brought by the abutters has been won by the town, I hope you will vote to accept the paper street as a public way. As a lawyer, as a former counselor, and as a citizen knowledgeable about this issue, I believe the town should act immediately to accept the street. And I understand you're not going to act tonight, but I do think that you should act without delay. There is nothing in the law that sets out a time frame for any further action other than accepting the public street. So I would encourage you to accept the public street. I think that acceptance costs the town nothing. No parking needs to be built. No road needs to be constructed. Mm. Hopefully acceptance will provide the town with the leverage it needs to have the abutters agree to a resolution if it brings on another, another lawsuit, so be it. The town cannot put itself in a position where the mere threat of a lawsuit results in inaction by the town. To refuse to accept the public street is to give threats the upper hand. And I just remind you that this has been the subject of a petition with hundreds, I think even over a thousand signatures the public has been really clear in its desire to maintain public access. I'm heartened tonight that you've indicated uh, a desire by a majority of the council to move forward. And I would just urge you to do so without delay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Marianne. Uh, are there others that wish to speak on this item? Glenn Israel, you're up next. Go Thank ahead. You very much. Um, as you know, I represent a number of the abutters. My firm represents a number of the abutters. Um, and I understand that there are uh, a number of people that would like to have this paper street accepted and used for recreational purposes. Uh, and are suggesting that it should be accepted now and we can figure out what to do with it later or the town can figure out what to do with it later. Uh, but I'm not sure that that's true. And I think obviously you're gonna consult with your legal counsel on that. As you know, the only reason that this paper street exists is because the doctrine of incipient dedication caused it to come into existence based on a 1911 subdivision plan under which it was to be used for access to lots in the subdivision. And if you look throughout our town and other towns, you'll see that typically when towns accept one of these paper streets, it's because they need it to go somewhere and they build a road. Uh, that is what commonly happens. Here we have 100 or 200 or 1,000 people saying, town, don't build a road, accept this street and immediately repurpose it as a recreational area. And I know at least some of you counselors have been out there we're talking about providing public access to my client's backyards. And I don't think that's a proper purpose for the acceptance of a paper street. And I don't think it makes any sense for the town to go ahead and accept the street now and leave all those questions hanging out there. The abutters are certainly willing to work with the town and try to come up with a solution, but uh, using the acceptance as leverage, as was suggested by one of the earlier speakers, is not the way to get there. Thank you. Thank you. Are there uh, other members of the public that wish to speak on this? Deb Murphy, uh, you're up next. Deb, you might be on mute on your end. There you go, go ahead. Deb, you're, you're up if you can hear me. Deb, we're not hearing you on this end. Um, I don't know if you're muted on your end or not, but your mic is open.
Um, looks like maybe Deb's having technical issues. I think her husband's got his hand raised next, so maybe maybe she sorted it out there. So go to that line. Go ahead. Uh, we just want to say that we concur with Nick Bryant and Marianne Lynch and George Foley. Can we just get your address too, please, for the record? Yes, 24 Pilot Point Road. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other members of the public that wish to speak on this? I don't see any other hands raised at this time. OK. Um, Are there any counselors that want to add to the discussion before we move on from this item? I want to just um, answer a couple of things in regard to um, a couple of points that were brought up in comments um, relative to um, sort of the speed and pace at which this is moving. Um, I totally understand and respect um, those that would would want to see this move just as fast as is possible. Um, tonight in, in the executive session that we had with our um, council on this was the very first time we've had a chance to discuss with him um, directly um, since this uh, has come back around for us. So, um, you know, li literally the, the 90 minutes that we spent prior to this meeting is the first chance that we've had to engage in, in thorough conversation um, uh, with him. Um, so, um, what I want to, I guess, communicate is just that we are actively working on this um, because there is no motion on an agenda to specifically and, and um, definitively have a motion to accept does not mean that there isn't work uh, ongoing on this. Um, there will continue to be um, I think further work based on the conversation we just had in executive session uh, that will take place um, in public meetings coming up um, that will, um, you know, continue to speak to um, the objective of accepting uh, as as we get all of the sort of ducks in a row and um, and uh, like I said before, T's crossed and I's dotted. Um, I think there was somebody also from the public that said um, you can just accept and figure it out later. And, and, and um, I think most of us are under the impression from the advice that we've been given that that is not actually um, accurate. Um, and so we're working to put together um, as uh, detailed and um, specific a plan as possible in order to move forward. I think attorney Bryant um, referenced um, you know, having our, our own attorney and the town um, be in the best and, and most um, defensible position for any action we take. So that's exactly what the council is doing. Um, I will reiterate and underscore the point that um, there has at no point been any discussion um, about backpedaling um, from anywhere that we stand today um, in the in the positions that have been arrived at and um, the, the rights that have been affirmed um, through the, the decisions um, in, in both the original case and the appeal. So um, my appeal um, to those that obviously have a vested interest in this is um, for your continued patience and forbearance um, as the council goes through that specific and detailed work and effort. Um, because I, I have great confidence in saying that if um, anything were to happen um, where um, presumptive action or, or um, uh, overly expedient action without having gone through the lengths that we're trying to go to on this were to take place and it were to jeopardize um, any of the things that you've all expressed um, such a strong and, and um, significant desire for, then, you know, we, we would, we would feel and bear that responsibility as well. So, um, I, I don't know how much, um, sort of more clear I can be, 
um, in trying to communicate the position of the council um, within what we can sort of um, allowably reference, um, you know, based on some of the um, conversations that we've had um, directly involving our legal strategy on this. Um, so um, I, 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 I have a firm commitment to wanting to be transparent on this and, and I'm, you know, I think um, rightfully so, M maybe some criticism has existed from our most recent meetings on this that things have been a little too opaque. Um, I'm trying to lay all this out to be as clear and transparent as possible for everybody involved. Um, and um, and uh, communicate as clearly as possible that that's where um, the matter stands currently. So any other counselors that want to weigh in or add their thoughts to that, please do so. Chris? Yep, uh, I just wanna reiterate uh, much of what Jamie said, I'll, although with the caveat again that um, Jamie speaks obviously for himself, not the council with what he's saying. I'm speaking for myself, not the council. Um, and obviously, um, uh, uh, where should I start with this? Um, uh, I, I wish I had some idea. <laughs> I totally drew a blank. I'm sorry. Um, I get, I'll start with this. So uh, I, I, uh, I personally have found being on the town council uh, to be a very uh, uh, stressful, uh, mentally taxing uh, event. I nevertheless, I'm very grateful to my fellow citizens for uh, having me be on the town council for three years. But one reason I'm stepping off is um, it, it's very, uh, uh, very draining and stressful for me. Um, but I, I wouldn't be doing that if I didn't have faith in this group uh, to continue and act in the best interests of uh, the general public. So uh, for whatever it's worth, I, I have faith in all of you to proceed in the way that you, as you each judge it, seem view as the, what is in the best interest of us all. So uh, thank you for that. Um, with respect to... Uh, uh, the the inclin uh, the the there was a, 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 an illusion made at some point that about a recreational uh, usage of this. Uh, one reason we don't have a, a motion or anything happening at this point is uh, I have heard, um, and again this is just general. As we've had all of these discussions in public and whatnot, uh, I have heard no consensus at any point ever expressed by this town council as to how to proceed. Um, it is what we've agreed on was that. The t and why we continued with our paper, uh, with our rights with this paper street is that we intend at some point to, uh, to act on our right to accept. That's my understanding. I speak only for myself, but at no point have I ever heard any consensus on how, what that, the structure of that will be, how we will proceed. And to this day, I still don't see one. Um, my personal preference would be to accept this as a public way. Uh, I wanna see additional waterfront access. Uh, I look at something like this, someone might say, oh, it's, someone might allege or make out allegations, oh, it's to access particular lots. For me, I look at the map, it is yeah, just my personal opinion, but I see it as access to the waterfront. And I imagine maybe that's what the developer wanted. He wanted to give the, the public access to the waterfront. And obviously history doesn't repeat itself, but it rhymes. And I would encourage all of you, because this is one of the things, two, uh, two items down on our agenda tonight, look into the history of Cliff House Beach. Just look into the Cliff, history of Cliff House Beach. How did that come about? The town went through this before, and I'm very, I look back at that, and I'm like, thank goodness the town council back in 1911 fought for the town's rights so that we have Cliff, Cliff House Beach. And I, I'm very thankful that we have continued during my time on the council to fight for the, the public's rights and interests and to preserve what, whatever rights we have. Um, and I have complete faith in this town council to continue to do that going forward. And with that, thank you all. Thanks, Chris. Any other comments at this point? Jeremy? Sorry, I'm muting. Um, I just, you know, I just wanted to take a moment to thank all of the citizens who have um, advocated on this issue as well and continue to advocate around public access. Um, I think, um, you know, they, they helped to just show that this really is the position, defending these rights really is the position of the town and not just the council. And so thank you for your, your continued advocacy on that. Any other counselors, Penny? Um, I just wanna say that um, I think many people out there know that my, um, I'm a strong advocate for um, advocating and I appreciate the um, 
the work with my peers this evening to really um, help uh, identify a more strategic uh, approach. And um, I think Jamie's uh, statement of it's not backpedal, we aren't backpedaling, we're moving forward. And, uh, but um, as Nick Bryant said, we have to be, um, uh, know what we're uh, gonna be putting forward to people. So there's uh, work to do and it's going to get done. And I see it as a priority for the council for the coming year. Is there any other comments? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to item number 149-2020, uh, consideration of an extension of the short-term rental moratorium. Is there anybody from the public that would like to speak on this item? I do not see any hands raised. Uh, is there a motion? Uh, well, just as background, we uh, have a current moratorium in place that we adopted on the 13th of April. Um, that is set to uh, expire uh, shortly. So the motion here would be to extend for an additional 180 days um, to an effective date of June 1st. I think that should be 2021, right? Yep. Matt? It would be uh, the the short term rental uh, initial oh, moratorium began. began on June first, uh, uh, twenty twenty, and then this would be extending. Oh, I see. Okay, back yeah, to okay. January first of twenty one, taking you okay. up until July one of uh, twenty one. July one. Yep. This is second six out. Six is months. there a motion? So moved. Moved by Councillor Penny Jordan. Is there a second? Anybody? Councillor Gabrielson, um, discussion. I just want to point out um, extending the moratorium another 180 days, as we've discussed before in workshop and at the ordinance committee level, does not necessarily mean that we're 180 days away from completing this. Um, we can rescind the moratorium as soon as work is done on the short term rental ordinance changes, which is um, uh, relatively speaking imminent. Um, there is a um, um, Planning board public hearing uh, scheduled for Penny, help me out next Thursday. 17th, is it November 17th? 17th, is that next Monday? Uh, Tuesday. Tuesday. Um, so there's a planning board public hearing on this uh, next week, um, at which point it would be anticipated that the item returned to the council following the hearing. Um, so we're getting close on this. Um, I just wanted to, like I said, clarify that. Um, a moratorium does not in and of itself um, mean that there's nothing happening on this for the next six months. In fact, it's quite the opposite, but um, the way moratoria work is that um, you are able to extend once or twice maybe, but if, if after that you haven't taken action, um, you need to do so. Um, so it was felt safer here to extend for another six months rather than do it for three months and then fall short and have to extend again. So anyway, that's the background here. Is there any other discussion from the council on the motion? Seeing none, then could you call the roll please? Councilor Devereaux? Yes. Councilor Gabrielson? Sorry, having trouble with the unmute button tonight. Yes. Councilor Caitlin Jordan? Yes. Councilor Penelope Jordan? Yes. Councilor Straw? Yes. Chairman Garvin? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. And again, uh, the 17th is the public hearing um, with the planning board on that. Um, next up is item number 150-2020, review of the parking management of Cliff House Beach Park. Is there anybody from the public that would like to talk about this one? Seeing none, um, we referred to the conservation committee um, uh, 
concerned back in July about the usage intensity at Cliff House Beach. Um, there has been um, a workshop on this, uh, uh, ordinance committee workshop on this. Um, so the proposed motion is to refer to the ordinance committee, the recommendations uh, of the conservation committee regarding the usage and parking issues for decisioning. Is there a motion? So moved. Moved by Councilor Gabrielson. Is there a second? Second. Councilor Penny Jordan, any discussion? Jeremy? And I'd just like to thank Conservation Committee, the Police Department, and all of the neighbors um, for continuing to work together on this um, and come up with uh, you know, what seems to me a very workable solution. So thank you. Penny, not to put you on the spot, did you want to give a quick summary of the discussion we had on this at the ordinance committee level? Around the Cliff House speech? Yeah. Okay. I was on to the next one already. Oh. Um, um, yeah, basically um, at our ordinance committee meeting, um, we, uh, it, we had input from um, the citizens around Cliff House Beach who have done an extensive survey of um, what some of the uh, challenges might be, as well as what some of the um, solutions are. They, um, they basically have come forward with some um, potential uh, solutions in conjunction with what the um, uh, ordinance of uh, what the conservation committee had done. Um, what I anticipate as the next step here is that we'll continue those conversations. Um, really, it has to do with uh, parking. It has to do with um, the uh, how it encumbers the traffic in the um, in the area, and uh, the fact that there's not um, a lot of access or opportunity to access for people who are living in the neighborhood to really uh, use the beach. So we're trying to figure out ways to mitigate some of those issues. Thanks, Penny. Any other discussion? Oh, go ahead. Oh, I thought I cut you off. Any other discussion? All right. Um, Deb, can you call the roll, please? Councilor Devereaux? Yes. Councilor Gabrielson? Yes. Councilor Caitlin Jordan? Yes. Councilor Penelope Jordan? Yes. Councilor Straw? Yes. Chairman Garvin? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Item number 151-2020, Town Farm Parking Amendment. Uh, is there anybody from the public that would like to speak on this one? I don't see any hands raised. Um, we had previously referred to the ordinance committee uh, a review of the proposed amendment on the zoning ordinance to make a make parking permitted uh, a permitted use at the town farm district. This is to basically codify uh, what the current state is there, um, but is in uh, disagreement with the wording in the current ordinances for parking. Um, the recommended action here is that we refer the recommendations of the ordinance committee to the planning board for review and consideration. Is there a motion? So moved. Moved by Councillor Penny Jordan. Is there a second? Second. Councillor Devereaux, any discussion? Seeing none. We please have a roll call vote. Councilor Devereaux? Yes. Councilor Gabrielson? Yes. Councilor Caitlin Jordan? Yes. Councilor Penelope Jordan? Yes. Councilor Straw? Yes. Chairman Garvin? Yes. The motion carries. Thank you. Item number 152-2020, uh, our continuing effort to load up the planning board's docket. Uh, this one, consideration of fence amendments. Is there any public comment on this item? Seeing none, uh, at um, 
our August meeting, we referred to the ordinance committee, uh, the item to review any fence regulations. Uh, the ordinance committee has come back with um, some recommendations and uh, the recommendation here is to refer to the planning board for review and consideration. Is there a motion? So moved. Moved by Councilor Penny Jordan. Is there a second? Second. Councilor, Councilor Caitlin Jordan got that one. Any discussion? I just want to. Um, I just want to say to the, my fellow council people, um, we looked at um, several towns' ordinances, not just from in Maine but around the country, and um, and there were many uh, that were quite complex. And, um, and as we uh, discussed this, we determined that um, let's uh, make sure that we're defining what fences are um, and um, look at them from a, um, a height requirement, but recognize that people have the, um, the right to put fences up on their properties. Um, so we tried to strike a good balance here and then um, prepare it to send along to planning board. Any other, uh, Jeremy, go ahead. Um, I was just uh, wondering if um, so anyone from the ordinance committee could comment on the, I believe the number in the proposal is eight feet. Um, and uh, my recollection of the fence prompted this is that it's a, fence that looks to be about that height. Um, I was just curious, uh, you know, if you could comment on sort of how that figure was arrived at or. Um, I, I'll come at it from my perspective and how I feel we got there, not only based on the fact of what you just described, but uh, if we, as we looked at other fence ordinances, it seemed to be some consistency around uh, the height and there seemed to be some consistencies around height and grade. And so, um, and so um, those, that's basically from my perspective of where we landed on that. Maybe Chris and um, Jamie can add to that. Cool. I'll, I'll, I'll jump in for me. Um, Six feet, it would basically either be six or uh, eight feet, six, um, a six foot five person walking by can see over. Um, so therefore I would uh, then uh, skew towards eight. Um, and then also just fairness and equity. And uh, for me is if I can have a hedge of a particular height, uh, I should be able to have a fence of that height. Um, and obviously we haven't restricted hedges or whatnot, but if I can have an eight foot hedge um, restricting fences to four feet or whatnot, if I can have a, a foot edge that serves the same purpose. Uh, eight seemed more realistic. Okay, uh, any other comments or discussion on this? Seeing none, we'll vote to refer to the planning board, Deb. Councilor Devereaux? Yes. Councilor Gabrielson? Yes. Councilor Caitlin Jordan? Yes. Councilor Penelope Jordan? Yes. Councilor Straw? Yes. Chairman Garvin? Yes. The motion carries. Thank you. Next up is item number 153-2020, consideration of a pesticide regulation. Uh, back in October of last year, we referred to the ordinance committee, uh, review of the comprehensive plan item number 51 uh, to come back with uh, any potential recommendations around pesticide use. The Ordinance Committee discussed this at multiple meetings in May, August, and September, um, actually invited and had um, really quality input and presentation from um, a number of external um, uh, experts um, that uh, uh, um, gave us a lot of good information. Um, we also um, uh, had um, some uh, review of the Falmouth um, uh, both process to which they reached their current um, uh, regulation of pesticides and a look at what those actually were. Um, and so the committee, the ordinance committee is recommending sort of following on that track. 
um, which is what is included here um, for consideration. So um, it is the recommendation here that we refer the recommendation of the ordinance committee for the full council to discuss at a future workshop. So, so move. <laughs> Sorry, Valerie, go. Moved by Councillor Devereaux, seconded by Councillor Penny Jordan. Any discussion? Oh, I didn't ask the public if they wanted to talk about this. I'm sorry. Is there anybody from the public that wishes to speak on this? 16 folks from the public still remaining with us? I don't see any hands raised. So um, motion by Valerie, seconded by Penny. Is there any discussion? Can I, can I just add? Go ahead, Penny. Yeah. Um, when we were having the presentations by um, uh, Soil and Water District and yard, Healthy Yardscaping, um, there was a question of uh, what are some examples of some towns who are um, um, really addressing the pesticide and fertilizer um, regulations in some different ways. And Falmouth is the town that came up and, um, and uh, their yeah, their conservation commission chair came and uh, spoke with us and presented this. And it seemed to fit very well with um, uh, the direction that could potentially work for uh, Cape Elizabeth as well. And so that's why um, we selected this to bring it forward to the council, so. Thanks, Penny. Any additional comments or discussion? Seeing none, can we have another vote, Deb? Councilor Devereaux? Yes. Councilor Gabrielson? Yes. Councilor Caitlin Jordan? Yes. Councilor Penelope Jordan? Yes. Councilor Straw? Yes. Chairman Garvin? Yes. The motion carries. Thank you. The last item on our agenda is number 154-2020 the Vernal Pool referral. Um, we had had back in February a request um, that came from a citizen request uh, to refer to the ordinance committee rule of the Vernal Pool regulations. Um, that ordinance committee discussion occurred in August and September and uh, the unanimous vote of the ordinance committee um, was to take no specific action at this time and to revisit at a future date to the extent uh, of the comprehensive plan that the growth areas are changed or amended. Um, is there anybody from the public that would like to speak on this item? I see no hands raised. Um, so there's no specific action that is called for um, at this time. Are there any counselors that have any questions about the decision uh, and the recommendation that the ordinance committee came to? Or want to add anything? Chris, did you want to add anything? Yeah, I just wanted to lodge in all of your heads why uh, this direction. My, under my understanding why we went this direction is the, uh, we, had, we brought in a um, professor from University of Maine up in Orno who uh, was really, really well, well versed on this stuff. And it was uh, great of uh, the town planner uh, to be able to uh, bring her in. Uh, and they had, a, they had a really interesting approach for how to deal with vernal pools going forward. But by virtue of how our um, districts are laid out in our town, it really wouldn't have seemed to have worked very well. So uh, I'm just, my comment is just to lodge in your guys' heads. Uh, if you reach the point of redoing the districts just think, oh, hey, didn't Chris say something 10 years ago, whatever that was. At that <laughs> point in time, there's a great, yeah, this, I know you guys are elephant brains. Uh, if, you, if you can just remember, hey, there was this great way to redo them that would really work a lot better, but it required us to redo our, our district. So if you ever do, just remember that. Thanks, Chris. I think I recall at the beginning of this meeting, highlighting your skill at getting into the details. And that would be one of them right there on display. <laughs> Parting shot. I think we could have a standing motion to just say, hey, didn't Chris say something about that at some point? <laughs> uh, any other comments or discussion on this item? Seeing none, is there anybody still with us from the public 
uh, that wishes to comment on anything that was not covered on tonight's agenda. All right, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. All right, Councilor Straw, is there a second? I'm not going to second it because I don't want Chris to go. I'll second it. Seconded by Penny. Any discussion? Chris, good luck and Godspeed. Thank you all. It's been a pleasure. And I know she's already left us, but to Valerie as well. So anyway, uh, one last roll call vote, please, Deb. Councilor Devereaux. Yes. Councilor Gabrielson. Yes. Councilor Caitlin Jordan? Yes. Councilor Penelope Jordan? Yes. Councilor Straw? Yes. And Chairman Garvin? Yes. I thought he was going to say no just to be that one. <laughs> one last six word for, vote. For posteria. <laughs> Thank you all. Right, all. Thanks, everybody. Really Have a good night. It. Thanks, Chris. Good night.